In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to create a drop shadow effect in Photoshop. First thing we're going to do is come up to File, New, and this is going to be an 8.5 by 11 with uh, inch document, which is a standard size that you're going to want for uh, anything that you're going to be printing, uh, at least if it's portrait size. And with this, uh, like I've said before in some of the other things I've referenced for printing, you would normally have the resolution at 300 dpi or 300 pixels per inch and then the color would most likely be CMYK if it was a full color print. But for the sake of file size, uh, I'm just going to keep it at 72 and RGB. Click OK and we have our canvas to work from here. I'm going to bring in some images that will fill it up and then we'll add the drop shadows to those images. So first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Come to Place and I'm going to come to my image folder and pick out a few good ones. I'll pick out some ones from work. Let's see. Got a good one of the rig right here. Yeah, I'll use this one as one of them. Make this the top image. And we're going to edit these a little bit too. I'm just bringing them in right now. Hit place and we'll get another image. This one will get one of the water tanks. Hit place. And this one's going to be on the bottom. About right here and we'll bring in one more place and come back here pick out one last one here we go we'll get the company logo in this one okay hit return and now you have your three images they're overlapping they do not look good this would be a horrible thing to take to print so let's get to work on it uh, very first thing I'm gonna do is come over here and rearrange the layers uh, right now they come in the order that I placed them in so uh, this one here I'll click this to show you which one it is at the top this one's on the bottom I actually want to have this one at the top so I bring it up top and you can see now it actually overlaps that last one so I don't I want it to overlap but I don't need all of this uh, kind of wasted space on the bottom so I'm gonna come up here grab my selector the rectangular marquee and I'm making sure I'm on the right layer I'm gonna come select it hit delete Oh, sorry, I have to, um, whenever you're bringing in certain types of images, you actually have to rasterize them first. So right click on that layer, come to rasterize layer. Now I can hit delete. Now I hit delete and it's good to go. Command D to unselect it. And this image is still over here, but it's not, uh, it's not showing all that wasted space. So that's good. Uh, the other thing that I'm wanting to do is bring this one to the top. So I actually want this one with the logo here to be on the very bottom. So I'm going to cl click and drag. And now this one's at the top. It has a little bit of wasted space up there. So I'm going to come and get rid of some of it. I'm going to have to rasterize this one as well before it gives me that error message. And delete. Command D, and now we're already looking a little bit better. Nowhere near done yet, but it's looking better. So now we're going to learn how to do a drop shadow. So the first thing you're going to do is come up to this top image and click and drag it down. Don't drag it to the trash, but the one right next to it will duplicate that image. So you can see now you have two of them. We want to work with that one on the bottom, but we're going to turn it completely black. So click on this lock transparency button right here because I'll show you what happens. Say that you forgot to do it, which I do sometimes if you watch these tutorials. Uh, Command delete will turn everything black and that's not what we want. So hit Command Z and come back here, click lock, this tra lock transparent pixels. And what that means is it just means that only the image is going to get affected when I do something, nothing in the background will. So 
I've clicked that, now I hit Command Delete. It now will have turned it black. And if I just hit, uh, come up here to the Move tool, and I hit down just a few spaces, you can already see right around here, uh, that's coming out. So I'm going to do that just a little bit more. And that looks perfect right there. I just want to give it a few pixels right below it. That's not the shadow, that's just what we're going to use to create the shadow. Uh, come up and unlock those pixels. And now we're going to come up to the filter toolbar and go down to blur and then Gaussian blur. And now you can see right away by adding this blur, we're taking that uh, black background image and now it's added a beautiful drop shadow right below it. And 15 pixels is exactly what I want to use. Uh, you could take it up even further, but that kind of creates an effect I'm not wanting for this. You could use it for yours. If you're wanting something a little bit more subdued, you could bring it down to like a, I don't know, like a three or a five or something in that range. Uh, I personally, for this image, I'm wanting 15. That works perfect. Hit OK. And now you can see this has a great looking drop shadow right below it. And now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom image. So click it, down and duplicate it, grab the bottom one, lock the pixels, hit Command D, and drag it up a few, about right there. Unlock the transparency, come up. And one nice thing about Photoshop for filters. If you can see now, that Gaussian blur that I picked before is actually preloaded on the top because I just used it. And it's loaded with the exact specifications that I already picked in when I came to blur, Gaussian blur, and set it to 15. So I don't even have to use, uh, I don't even have to come all the way back here, and I don't even have to click this. As you can see, it creates whatever your last filter you used. It puts that in memory, and now all I have to do is hit Command F, and as you can see, now I have that beautiful shadow right there. And you, if you can now look at the entire image, you can see this is now looking completely different than it did just about five minutes ago by adding that drop shadow that gives it a really nice 3D effect and you could do different things. I, I actually use something very similar to this for one of our company's uh, manuals and designed it and added some text and uh, titles and uh, some different com uh, textual components from there and it was printed and is used by everybody in the company now so uh, and they're very happy with how it came out this is a very visually appealing uh, way of doing uh, document covers cover pages different things like that you'll find that using shadows is a, a, a really nice way of adding good style elements to web pages and to some different uh, really anything whether it's be printed materials or anything like that so you know not, you know now know how to do it so please let me know if you have any questions and thanks for listening